everybody. Let's play the singing bowl a minute. Thank you. So the reason I play the singing bowl before I do readings, I'm just going to leave it ring a little bit like that, Ooh. is because the sound frequency that has been sort of programmed into this singing bowl and the chimes and all the things that I use, those frequencies are designed to help elevate you and me and all of the energies around us to sort of help us evolve, help us use our highest thinking, our best thinking, our best processing. I'm quite, like I said, I'm intuitive. Let me show, tell you who I am. My name is Marcy Melzer. I'm an intuitive speech and language pathologist and language facilitation coach and consultant. If this is the first time you're watching me, I have on my channel, I help parents and caregivers teach late talkers how to shift the nonverbal energetic communication they're using from even before birth that they were telling you in their tummy all the way up to now. No matter how old they are, they're still using this energetic level of communication with you. No matter how much they're dragging you around and pointing, even no matter how much they're talking, they could be a chatterbox. But intuitively still underneath their true inner being self communicates with your true inner being self at a whole different level because of your connection. And it may be a connection from birth because you're the mom or the dad, but it also could be a connection just because you're an energy match. You, I happen to be an energy match for little kids. I vibe at a high vibe and little kids normally vibe at high vibe. So do animals, dogs, cats, things like that. That's why if you're one of those people that's attracted to kids that they always look at you or that animals just love you you know when you go at the aquarium people reach and touch the stingray tank you know that kind of thing so people resonate out of vibration the sound resonate everything has vibration and this idea of connection i got my 2022 shirt on because it's all about connection now when we connect with the vibration around us that feels good that feels fun that comes from you know happiness and optimism and ideas for the future that's when we really decide right how to move forward how how to feel good every Every day and not waiting for the future to be happy or worrying about how these things happen to us, you know, in the past. All of that stuff doesn't matter because what really matters is what's going on right now. And that's what I learned. It took me a lot to be able to bring this out on YouTube and start doing this for people. And so I know that there are people who are resonating with it. I see people joining me to watch now. So this is how it's going to work today. Practice your intuitive connection right along with me. It evolved with me just through practice. I picked up oracle cards. I started watching YouTube videos. I started reading books. And I started to tap into what does this message I'm hearing on the screen mean to me? Because it does. Everybody's going to get something different out of this. And if you want to get some inspiration for yourself, go ahead. Don't be shy. Send me a little energy and I'll see what the cards have for you. Now, these cards were developed because I have good connection with late talkers. I've known them for years and years and years. <laughs> I didn't, my own kids were talkers because I facilitated spoken language from birth. And that's why they both started talking right away. But I think that, you know, these late talkers, they come in with blockages. And we talked about that in the last video, how to find the blockages. If you don't know where they are, you know, working with those blockages or just overcoming them might be what you need some guidance about. You know, where are blockages? Maybe you don't know. Maybe they're un un uncovered. You need to uncover them. You know, maybe that's what you want to ask because the energy in these cards comes from the late talkers. It comes from all of them because, like I said, as everyone's connected to each other, 
other and all these late talkers, they have very similar ideas. There's 71 cards with different messages from late talkers in this pile. And if you want to get a message for you, go ahead and give me a comment and I'll pull a card for you. All right. To get things warmed up, I'm going to pull a card for anyone who's watching on the replay. So if you just happen to tune into this and you're just curious about what the heck it's all about, this card's for you. This is the energy that you needed to hear today. And it is this one, of course. We're in this together because I'm really talking about connection today and the energy that I'm putting into this card is how important it is for lay talkers to connect with the... Um, the um, caregivers in their life as far as learning what you do together. What are we doing to get to a different place? Yeah, my communication isn't what I want it to be. Yeah, my behavior isn't what I want it to be or what I don't, your behavior isn't what I want it to be. Your evolution isn't what I want you to be. I want you to grow up and get independent and be in the future, but you're in this together. It's not, you're not responsible for making that late talker. You may have had that programming put into you by a parent of yours or someone else saying you're responsible for making sure your kid does X, Y, and Z. And that's not true. And that's really not true. You are responsible for giving opportunities to the late talker to learn to do these things. You have a responsible to expand and offer them, you know, things to do and learn but you don't have a responsible for their integration of that. That's their responsibility. And what uh, an effective teacher or facilitator is going to make that feel motivating to the late talker so that they choose to take advantage of your beautiful opportunity. I know you like bicycles. So let's get a bicycle. How do I know you like bicycles? Because I've been watching you. I, you've been watching videos about bicycles. You've been playing with bicycles. We were visiting a friend. Their kid had a bicycle and you were all over that thing. That's how I know. You didn't say, Mom, I want a bicycle. Please buy a bicycle for me. But you knew that through your intuitive connection. That's why you're in it together. And that's why in here it says share your strategy. Because just like you're going to share that bicycle, you're also going to share, what? why did I buy you this bicycle? Why did I buy you this bicycle? What do we, what, what are we going to do with it, right? This bicycle is the right size for you. It's the right color for you. It's the right shape for you. It's the right whatever for you. And it has all the adaptations you need. It's the right color. It's appealing to you. It feels easy because, and you're excited about it. That's why I picked this one. I didn't pick an ugly one that's too big that, you know, because of your intuitive connection. See, remember you're using your intuitive connection with every decision that you make about the late talker. Join them, share them with, share the strategy with you. Reluctant late talkers will stop resisting and work hard. Just like I said in the other card, they will stop resisting and work hard. That's what you want, right? If you're feeling resistant, those of you who are watching on the replay, you must be feeling some resistance at home, okay? And how do I get my kid? You share your strategy. And if they don't like your strategy, they're going to show you. Mm. That's not a good one. That's not a good match. That's the wrong frequency for me. I want to do something more adventurous and you're trying to get me to do basic stuff or vice versa. You're trying to get me to do adventure stuff and I'm still trying to learn the basics. If it's not a good match, they will abandon you. Use that knowledge. Don't push it, your energy, and saying, I know better for you. You don't. It's the, it's the late talker's responsibility to integrate the knowledge. It's your responsibility to help them with the equipment and empowerment that they need that is on their level, high or low. And that's part of, I just was inspired to think about that. So think about that and explain. Here's what you're going to do. Explain how you are making it easy for the late talker. I'm going to make it easy for you to listen to me by talking slowly, by telling you words you want to hear. I'm going to make it easy for you to try words because I'm going to use examples of words that you know already mixed with other words that you don't know or used in a way that you don't know how to use them yet, but they're words you know. 
their words you know, you're going to be doing all those things and you want to share. We're going to use the words you know. You keep saying cookie, cookie, cookie. We're going to talk about where do cookies come from and how do we get them and how do we enjoy them and how do we share them. All the reasons we have cookies in our life, right? That's a team effort. That's not just, oh, you said cookie. Now you're in your head. I, he must want cookie. He must. I'm just going to give him a cookie. When in fact, your child is saying cookie because they want you to teach them how to bake them or they want a different kind or they want to go to the store, right? Maybe they're even saying cookie because they want to go to the store to buy fruit, but the last thing you bought at the store was cookies, right? You're going to know what that word, that one little bit that they give you means when you connect with them. Okay, so there's a lot of messages about that card. I'm not seeing any comments come in. Um, don't be shy. I see some people watching. If you have a question, you want to say hello, please let me know and I'll pull a card for you. Let's see. I'll just pull another random one if not. And then if I'm not getting any questions, I'll see. Oh, here comes one. Let's see. I knew somebody was going to pop in. And of course, it's Lila. Hey, Lila. You are amazing and love this so much. If I could get a card, that would be awesome. And it's, I'm happy to share. Like I said, Lila's not shy. She is ready to try anything. And, you know, that's when you um, that's when you get the best results. Right. Because you don't have any um, ideas of I'm going to do this because I know this is going to get me X, Y and Z. So let's see what Lila needs to hear today as her family works through their language facilitation journey. I'm going to just pull it out of the middle for you. Right. This one is for you. Ah, it says, draw me a picture. Draw me a picture. We haven't seen this one before. There it goes. Look. And the, the back, I'll read it to you, but it says, provide visual aid. So this one did go, okay. Lay talkers relate to visual images first when they learn new vocabulary. They always do. Pictures help them understand and integrate. So draw pictures. You can look at pictures too if you can't draw, but you got this one because there's other ones that, that look at videos and talk about you know, what, looking at images, but this one is about drawing. And I know that activity and action is a big part of what you guys are doing with your language facilitation just from your previous comments and things. So your late talker may want to see it's so, sort of like instead of when they say cookie, they want the cookie to arrive. When they say cookie, they want to show you how to make the cookie. Your late talker may not be able to draw yet, but they might really enjoy watching you draw, especially simple things that they like, like the cookie. I'm going to draw a cookie. And then you can draw whatever kind of cookie you want, a big one, a little one, one with chocolate, one with stripes, one with chips, one with whatever you want, right? You can draw those things and think about them. And that's true for anything. If you want to go on vacation and you can't go on vacation, you can draw the airplane. You can draw the beach. You can draw the train. You can draw the things that you want to do. And that will help you talk about them when you can't get out and do them. And it also really teaches the lay talker how to build stories, visual stories in their mind. Now, they already do. They learn them on videos and they see the progression of things. But Lay talkers usually get focused on one sort of bit and they review that bit until they learn it and then they use it to communicate a lot of other things. Sometimes if they're focused just on that one little bit, you can find yourself frustration. Like they're so focused on the bit that they're not listening to the expansion yet. In this case, it's about using your images to help expand the story out of that bit. So your kiddo's obsessed with, I happen to know Daniel Tiger because of your last, and you draw Daniel Tiger. So your kiddo's thinking about it. He wants to watch the videos. He wants to see the songs. He wants to hear the stories. He's thinking about Daniel Tiger. How you're going to help him adapt and, and move Daniel Tiger into his life is to talk about how does his life relate to Daniel Tiger events and opportunities that he's participated in the past. If you've watched the theme, whatever theme you've been watching, that kind of thing, tell those stories. It's not just Daniel Tiger sad 
Why is Daniel Tiger sad? Your lay talker wants to know and drawing pictures can do. So what the strategy here says is draw pictures of the people, places, and things that the lay talker already knows, right? Things they already know because you want to spark a more detailed conversation. Again, how does that thing relate to your lay talker? The other one, draw related pictures. Um, and with lots of details and add scenery, <laughs> just like I was saying, as you talk to turn the images into stories. Because again, you want to expand that single idea, that label into why do I, why am I saying this label? Do I want that thing? It might be because they want it, but actually it's because I'm just thinking about it and I want you to talk about it. It's like, remember our trip to, you know, India? I loved our trip to India. We can't go to India tomorrow, but we can still relive the energy of our trip to India when we have conversation and talk about it. And that's why these strategies will help you when you provide visual aids. And you can look at pictures of India if you want to do it or draw them yourself. And that's what this card said. So what an interesting thing. I love that when we're doing these card pulls, all of you are getting to see some of the different cards that are in this deck. And so, yeah, thanks for all the likes and shares. Oh, my nose is itchy. That means somebody's thinking about me. So thank you so much for all that. And if you want um, a card pull for you, go ahead and comment right now. I'll stay on here for a little bit longer pulling cards for people. Let me pull another one just for the collective and we'll see what else. You know, sometimes it helps when we ask a question, then we can get some little bit more specific ideas, right? So, and let's see, let's see. So, love it. My TSH is listening with me and was shaking his head. Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's wonderful. And I appreciate that feedback because like I said, what we do with these cards, this is just a fun way to, again, reconnect. This is the day of connection, 2-2-22. Two, two, We're looking at how do we find the connection with the lay talker? How do we inspire them to want to keep evolving and keep on the everyday journey that we know is a long journey? It's a long journey. So if you have a question, please comment with yours. But let's talk about, since we know it's a long journey, how do we help parents feel better now? What would your late talker want you to know to help you feel better about maybe the time it takes or the patience or, you know, if you're feeling like it's not happening fast enough, that could be a lot of people in this retrograde energy. And it looks like ah, one just fell out. That's what you can see it happening. That's what happens sometimes. And so it's talk me through this. Talk me through this. Coach through fear coach through fear. So if you are having fears, again, it's not happening fast enough. What if he doesn't have X, Y, Z ability? You might have been told that your child has to be doing certain things or stop doing certain things in order to participate in something you want them to do, a school, uh, lessons, uh, you know, a family gathering. You know, I just saw an article that somebody was told their kid was not welcome for play dates anymore. You know, those kinds of things can really make a parent or caregiver feel like you're defeated, you know, that you've been working super hard and you're still not seeing progress as fast as other people are. I mean, you know, that's the whole point. I too, when we see people who are, you know, chiming in on videos saying, my kid's talking, that didn't happen overnight. Those guys work, those moms and dads, they work for months or years sometimes following these strategies and trusting themselves to get it going. And the, the recommendation on the back of this, like it said, it says coach through fear. Let's see if it will... Come on. There we go. Late talkers will move through experiences based on their expectations. Okay. When they know what is going on, they can calmly focus on the task at hand. So explain what to expect before, during, and after new experiences, role play, the potential struggles, 
right? And provide support with patience. I know other kids are doing, because remember, they also feel like I want to be doing what those other kids, I want to be riding my bike as well as he's riding his bike. Even if they're not thinking about talking in that way, which they probably are, they're thinking about other things. You can see them struggling as they're riding their bike while other kids are fast about it. And then they want to give up and quit and things like that, right? Because they get frustrated. You feel the same way. You could be feeling the same way. I just felt that energy and that's kind of why I decided to pull this card. And if that resonates with you, please like this video. The other thing about working with energy and ideas and inspiration, which is basically all this is, is just a bunch of inspiration that I'm trying to give you to work with your own higher self, to work with your own intuition, to work with your own lay talker, to work with your own process, your own journey to teach the things that you think are important. And when that is your focus, that's how we bring it back to the present moment. What is important today? Let's talk about that. What's important today for late talkers and their caregivers and, and parents and aunties and uncles and other ones? You know, that's the other thing too. Maybe the parent of the late talker isn't capable of, of doing this work because they're stuck still in their own blockages. Um, you know, that's no joke. Unconscious blockages, things that don't, um, you know, that block the process, that block our ability to be in our high vibration, that worry, that distraction, those mindset traps. You're, you could know that the parent of this late talker in your life is struggling with life in general, because there's a lot of things potentially causing life changes right now. And maybe you're not the primary parent of this late talker. Let's pull a card for you guys. If you're still watching this, you must be a very intuitive person and you want to know how to help. Maybe they're your clients. Maybe you're an intuitive um, language facilitator of some other kind. For all of those of you who are not parents, let's see my advice. Look, you feel my feelings too. It is not just the parents that are this intuitively connected with these kids. If you are a professional and you're still watching this video now, you understand, you understand that it is the feelings of these kids and matching their vibration that is the number one thing that's the most important. It doesn't matter what toys you got in your bag. It doesn't matter what activities you have planned for the day. Unless you're in the zone, unless you feel their feelings and you're in the same heart space, it's a green card on the back. That's why it's not going to show up because my green screen. Let's see. It says, describe your experience. Intuitive parents and caregivers and language facilitators, all you guys, you do this. You feel everything these kids do. When they take your toy and chuck it across the room, when they try to scratch you, you know, you know that there's something in there underneath that, that that's just a reaction. It's a, it's a true communication about something that's deeper and you are the one that they're depending on to help dig in and find that for them, right? Intuitive parents and caregivers feel everything their kids do. Late talkers need your demonstration of how to ride through these energies, right? To learn how to express their feelings in an easy way that everyone can understand. So this is when you get creative with your language models. You describe how you're feeling using these creative words that are sort of an alternative to a curse word. Curse words exist because they're a way for us to verbally express our feelings without physically doing it, right? And you want to teach a late talker some words that can serve that purpose for them, okay? Because you feel that they're frustrated with even their parents sometimes, okay? And so you got to teach them how to tell their parents in the 3D world because they're not getting, their parents aren't getting the intuitive connection because they're not connecting at the same vibe. You're connecting with the late talker. You get it. You feel their feelings. So you want to show them, don't worry about talking to their parents. He needs this. He needs that. That's not going to work. They're not open. But the late talker is open with you. And so you connect with them in the heart space, the green chakra, right? And you teach them things like, oh, wow. Uh, 
Uh-oh. Bummer. Oh, no. Right? So even if the mom is like, do this, do this, do this, do this, and the late talker goes, oh, no, or they go, uh-oh, then the parent's going to think something's wrong right? Something's wrong. Highlight. It's like the, it's like the curse word alternative or the red light that you put on your car. Alert, alert, alert. We're not connecting here. You're on the wrong path. You're trying to get me to do something I don't want to do. I need to let you know. So that's your benefit. You can help these lay talkers by teaching them how they can share their frustrations with other people, right? When you describe your own experience, if you're feeling frustrated, when you feel frustrated by life circumstances, traffic, your order got wrong at the restaurant, you it's snowing and you can't go out, your whatever was canceled, describe how you feel, that bummer that you can't do or get the thing that you want. This happens every single day in the life of a late talking child, every single day. They can't get what they want. It happens to all of us in our life. Every day things happen. And this is your opportunity to teach the late talker how to express that. So, all right. Not seeing any more comments coming in. Oh, I did see one. Sorry. Here is one from Taryn. Wow. Your videos have helped so much. I'm so glad to see you. I'm going to pop up here above this. My three and a half year old daughter has so many words at this point that I've lost count. That is so amazing, Taryn. Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. And congratulations, because that didn't happen by magic. It happened with language facilitation. So bravo, Taryn. She's also starting to say full sentences to the point to point things out or tell me to do something. She's always labeling and pointing things out to me like she's trying to start a conversation. She is trying to start a conversation and I try to keep it going, but it doesn't go very far. How can I help her become more conversational? All right, now that is a really good point and we can talk about strategies on, on tomorrow's Q&A video, but let's talk, pull a card for that because um, what does your lay talker, so she's obviously wants to be a chatterbox and she wants to have conversations. My first feeling is you need to start expanding, give her more credit than she, um, than, than you have been because she probably knows a lot more than you think. Let's see what card we get for you right out of the middle of the deck. Oh, look at this. It says, I am trying. And she sure is with all that effort to try to say words and sentences. That's amazing. So look at the picture again. Here's a late talker and there's a pair of pom-poms there. All right. And on the back, it says celebrate every effort. Now this is a green card because that's why your heart chakra is going to be coming into play here. But the thing about this is your late talker wants to hear a little bit more cheerleading from you. Okay. The way to get her to expand into more conversation is by telling her what you know she knows by saying it out loud. So let's see what it says on the card. Late talkers may feel that they are not good enough. And that's kind of what you're saying almost in your in your thing low key here. She's saying a lot of stuff, but she's not saying conversation yet, right? So that's kind of what, when you look at what does this question really mean is, I'm happy with what we've got, but I want more. And so you want your lay talker to make sure that you remind her every day that every effort is good enough. It's a good effort because that's the only way we get progress is with good effort, right? So they may not feel, even though you do say good job, because she knows you know you want more. You have been low-key prompting or somehow trying to get her to do something. She can feel it. She can feel the pressure. Like, man, I am trying. Look at how much I'm doing. And you still want more. So it's okay to want more. It's okay to want more evolution. But your lay talker just needs some encouragement, some more encouragement. More effort requires more encouragement, not bribes. Let's listen to what the card says here, right? 
They, um, it, what happens it, when their behaviors and first tries at speech are more often judged and corrected than heard and responded to. So again, like you said, you can sense that she is trying to get you to spark conversation. So that's what she's doing. She wants more conversation. And it says here, notice and appreciate all tries at communication, no matter what behavior or speech tries come out, even if it's wrong, even if it's the wrong word, even if it's said gobbledygook and you're the only one that could understand it. You say, wow, listen to you talking. You're trying so much harder and you remind the lay talker of their progress. You said, basically, maybe she's saying cookie more like that. And you're like, wow, you're telling me not just that you want cookies, but that you want more cookies. You want me to get another cookie. You want two cookies instead of just one cookie. And so you're intuiting, right? You guessing basically that expansion. And that's what you have to provide there in the moment. So when they say one thing, my favorite strategy for this situation that you just described is when they give you one bit of, of knowledge that they're graciously giving you, they tell you a request or whatever, you give them back three full sentences. And I promise it'll turn into more than three because you can always talk about why or the method or the feelings surrounding any request. If they label something, why are they labeling it? They're giving an opinion about it. I like it. I don't like it. I want more. I don't want more. Or I really want that thing to go away. I'm scared of it, right? There's other reasons that we'll label objects. Your job is to expand the labels into the conversation because you know the circumstance why they're labeling it and they're and the and the combination of the nonverbal and verbal so if they say cookie cookie with a face like this you know that they mean you're wanting me to give you a cookie or you want to give me your cookie because that's something you want to share or cookie 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 you see that that looks like i don't want that cookie i don't want any more that's yucky or i'm too distracted to even think about cookies i'm not even worried about cookies. That's your job as a language facilitator. When you see this feeling of <sighs> more, you want more from me. And you're like, yeah, I do want more. You have to motivate them to put the extra effort in and how you motivate it is with cheerleading. And then the other thing you do is when you hear it, just like I said before, when you hear whatever you hear, jargon, babble, single words, a little sentence, because like you said, maybe she learned sentences for requesting, but she hasn't learned request uh, sentences for expressing feelings. Like I like that one better than this one, or I want the same one I had last week right? Or remember how we broke the rules. I want to break them again and eat dessert before dinner. Those kinds of things your kids don't know how to tell you. They were experiences you just kind of rode through, but they remember. They remember those past experiences and they want you to bring them up again and conversation. And what they'll do is they trigger that with a label, just like your daughter's doing. That's what it says right here. She is, you can see right here, it's like she's trying to start a conversation. She is. She is trying to start a conversation. So when you celebrate the talking that she's doing and expand the talking on top of it, then you're going to get what you're looking for as far as progress moving forward. So that's amazing. And thank you so much for sharing, Taryn. I'm super glad that you are having fun. It always happens that you make the shift from nonverbal communication into spoken language when you have fun, right? It's not a process where I'm trying to get you to do anything. It's my job to get you to do. It's always your job to do. It's my job to make it easy. It's my job to make it happy. It's my job to make it safe and not scary. And it's my job to make it fun. And when you as the facilitator create opportunities that feel to the late talker, and you know this because of your intuitive connection, it feels super easy. It feels super happy. It feels safe. And it feels fun. 
It feels fun when we do this work for teaching you talking. I don't even think about it anymore. That's how I used to do my job as a speech therapist. And I could see 30 families a week and flip flop to five kids a day because every time I walked in, I was like, what do you think is fun? Let's have fun here today. And the next house would be completely different how they see fun. And I would get to see and adapt every day to those families. That's what you have to do, whether you're a parent or a caregiver. Set up your stage, just like I did at the beginning of this video. What's the energy like in here? Are we all motivated to work or are we on different teams and not even here to you know connect together and try? Are we having conversation about the same topic or are you trying to get me to do something that I'm trying to get you to stop? Or am I trying to get you to do something that you're trying to get me to stop? That's the, that's the big deal about all of this is where it comes down to connection, okay? All right, one last blast if you have a, qu a question. And if I helped you, if anything I said on this video today resonated with you, please hit the like button. And you're definitely going to want to subscribe and hit the bell because these energy focus videos I do every Wednesday, I do energy focus and now I'm gonna start doing card pulls, but I don't know what time. Wednesday is my flux day and I might book clients appointments before or after or whatever. So definitely hit the bell icon. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, join the group, you know, figure out how to connect with me all the time so that you don't miss the next video because I'm not sure when they're going to come up. And alternatively, every Thursday is live Q and A. So that's on Thursdays. I didn't share my video about it on my other video, but this is live Q&A every single Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern. No matter where you are in the world, you can tune in to ask me more questions if we get want to get more clinical or we want to get more intuitive or whatever. This is more about the the, the processes, the blockages. And I talk about my workbook on that video or on that Q&A video, my 11-week language facilitation journey to speech. It's now coming out around the world. So everyone's going to be able to have access to the information in the workbook to use in tandem with my videos and get massive, massive progress. So that's the whole point of my platform. I'm trying to get the information out in ways that everybody can sort of digest it. But I know that there are a few of you that are ahead of the game as far as understanding the intuitive energy that's necessary to create the language facilitation zone, which is this energetic space where you're vibing at the same level. You're connecting. You're picking up what they're laying down. They're picking up what you're laying down and you feel easy easy, happy, safe, and fun. Doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be recovering from illness. You could be traveling on a crowded bus. You could be digging ditches and playing in the dirt. You could be sitting at home locked in. It doesn't matter what you're doing. You can connect. You can find easy, happy, safe, and fun things to do in your place where you are right now. As long as you establish the language facilitation zone, you can teach spoken language through anything, even a bunch of cards that I just made up and we're using to tap into energy. It's all just stuff, right? What really matters here is the connection, is the energy that you're working with, the positive way to move things forward. And that's how you're always going to see better progress. Always, always, always. All right. So Taryn says, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you all for joining me today. I'm super glad that you all are, um, yeah, joining me today. My name is Marcy Melzer. I'm an intuitive speech and language pathologist from wavesofcommunication.com. If you want to learn more about all of the resources I have, watch all the videos, read the books, see the stuff. It's all there at wavesofcommunication.com. Thank you again for joining me today. Please like, share, subscribe, do all the stuff you got to do. But the most important request that I have for you is to connect with the late talker. Dig in today. Find it. You can find the zone and you're going to be so happy. And when you're happy in the language facilitation zone with the late talking child, they learn to share their wisdom with the world. And that helps everybody. That helps all of us. When we raise these late talkers up, both energetically and functionally, so that they can share their ideas and wisdom with the world, 
that's how our world gets to be a better place. We're in a whole new process now in a brand new earth that we're creating. And you have been given the opportunity to work with a super energetic and excited late talking child. And you've been given the opportunity to help them bring that energy out into the world. That's your mission. You didn't realize it, but if you're watching this video, I'm here to tell you that's why you're here. That's why I'm here. And that's why we're working together. And it I'm so much more effective now teaching you to work with the kids in your life. And that's why it's called Waves of Communication. It, it, it just echoes out all over the world. And I can't wait to see how many more kids start talking because of your work with language facilitation. Thank you again for all your effort. And I will see you all on tomorrow's live Q&A. Bye for now.